Hello friends, welcome to the Postman tutorial series from Software Testing Help. In this video, we will see an introduction to the different types of variables supported by Postman. As part of the agenda, we will see how to distinguish and understand the different types of variables. We will see how we can create and access the different variable types supported by Postman. And we will try to understand the scopes of different variable types. So I am on my Postman console and I have two sample collections pre-built and we'll illustrate different variable types using these collections. So first of all, we'll get started with global variables. The global variables can be set using this environment management console. You can click this eye icon near this and you can see two section environment and globals. The environment is for adding environment variables. Global is for adding global variables. Let's try adding a global variable test global. And I'll say initial value as one. Let's save it. If I click the eye icon again, I'll see that the variable I created is now being set or persisted. We can use this variable directly in the request. So if I say users and this endpoint is from a publicly available endpoint, which is a fake data generator, HTTP request.in. It provides an endpoint for API slash user slash user ID and it gives some user data, random user data for this particular ID. So we'll basically use this request to understand different types of variables that are supported by Postman. First, let's now add the global variable that we added. So which was named as test global, you can see that there is also IntelliSense option in Postman that automatically finds out the available variables for you and if you hover over it it will give you details if it is already able to resolve or find it the g here denotes that it's a global variable it also mentions that the scope is global with initial and current values let me click send and we can see that the request is processed with id1 which is the value of the global variable so any of the postman variables can be accessed in two ways one directly through the request builder and secondly through the console or through the scripts that are either pre-request scripts or tests so we'll use the postman console debugger to fetch the information or fetch the values of different variables and we'll log the values in the console to see the output of those variables so to get the value of global variables you have to say pm dot globals dot get and the value is test global and if i write it in a console dot log statement Let's open the Postman console runner as well. And let's try hitting this request send. The Postman console runner will actually capture all the requests and responses that are coming in and going through the Postman and all the console logs. We can see the console log has printed one. That is the value of this global variable. let's add some text here to distinguish this and it says test global variable as one there is another way to get the value of this variable pm.variables.get test global 
Let's try hitting send again and see what's the value printed. We can see in both the cases the value printed is one, but we have used two different functions. One is pm dot globals, second is pm dot variables. Now the difference between these two functions is pm dot globals will always be limited to global scope, whereas the pm dot variables will apply the scoping rules to this particular variable. We'll try understanding more about scoping rules in later sections of this tutorial. But pm dot variables essentially apply scoping rules to fetch the value of a particular variable. Now here we so far now we have gone through how we can create a global variable and use it in request builder as well as how we can fetch the data for that variable. Let's try another kind of variable that is environment variable. It is very similar to global variable. The declaration is same as well. So if I click environment, only difference is with environment, you first need to create an environment itself, which is a container for the variables. The postman workspace can have multiple environments and each environment can have multiple variables so i'll name the environment as test environment and name of the test variable as test env variable and i'll say initial value as say 5 click add okay now i'll use this environment variable in the request builder now we can see that it's not getting resolved. The reason it's not getting resolved because for environment variable to take effect, we need to first select the environment that we are going to use while running a request or collection. So as soon as I select the test environment, I can see that this variable is getting resolved. And we can see the value by hovering over it. It shows that E is the environment variable and it shows the initial and current value as well as the scope as environment. If I hit this, I'll be able to see the response with the value as five. Now let's try the same script for environment variable. Now, since it's not a global variable, there is a specific function for environment variable called pm.environment.get. I'll change the name of the variable and similarly we can get it using pm.variables.get let's try clicking send and we can see that we get the value of global variables as well as the environment variable as pipe so so far we have walk through global variables and environment variables the third category of variables will be collection variables so collection is nothing but a container of for postman requests and collection variables can just be added through the collection console itself like through the collection edit window itself once you select collection edit go to variables tab and add a collection variable as we have added a global and environment variable and let's say the value here is six now these collection variables will be accessible to all the requests that are there in that particular collection we did not click save that's why it's not saved it won't work with hovering actually
so we can see here we added a collection variable and the test collection variable here is now resolved after hovering it you can see the scope is c which is collection and it shows the values itself click send and we can see that we are getting data for this variable now let's try printing this collection variable from here now as we had with specific functions for global and environment we don't have anything for collection so that's why we can just use pm.variables.get to fetch its value let's click send test collection variable let's clear this first and we can see that the value is printed as 6 so pm.variables will essentially try to find out the variable value in all the scopes in case it does not find a variable with that name it will try to display an error message so if i change it to test call var2 and click send it will say that the variable was undefined so let's remove this and now let's move to another kind of variable that is a local variable local variable is nothing it's essentially suppose you did some operation in pre-request script like you did some suppose a request required a session validation or a session token that was the part of request url itself and then you set that value to some local variable then you can use that variable directly in the request builder itself and that will be resolved as local variable so let's use pre-request script and i'll create a local variable with value say 7 I'll change this to test local variable. Now, since it does not know the request is not executed, that's why it will not show it as resolved. It will still show it as undefined variable. But when we execute this request, we'll see data for ID7 since we have set it as 7 in the pre request script. And let's try fetching the value for this variable as well. I'll click send. And we can see that test local variable is printed as 7. So now we know about global variables, environment variables, local variables, and collection variables. Let's now see what kind of scoping rules apply to these variables and then finally we'll see data variables so local variables are like function variables in analogy to any kind of programming language like java or c sharp and we know that the function variables have the highest preference like they are the closest to the running code so that's why the local variables are closest than environment variables then global variables and then collection variables so essentially the order is like local variables environment variables collection variables and global variables let's try illustrating it with an example first let's compare it with local and environment variable so i'm going to create an environment variable and a global variable with same name and then a local variable with same name as well so i'll click add an environment variable say test common and let's give it a value as one i'll create a local variable with name test common but with a different value than one that's two 
let's try hitting it and we'll use the request builder and we can see that on this request builder it shows that the variable value is 1 but still the execution use the value as 2 which is the value of local variable so while resolving the variables in this request builder the postman uses something like pm.variables.get to resolve this variable and whatever the value is returned when running that script it tries to replace that value we can also try doing that using the post request script test common variable and i'll say value is test common let's clear this first and you can see that common variable is 2 so now out of environment and local variable local variable has one in the scoping rule or scoping election let's try adding the same variable with a different value as global variable as well test common as 3 still since we have a local variable that will still win and we should still see the data for id2 which is set in the local variable now let's remove this local variable and now we have an environment and global variable of same name let's see now what happens so ideally environment variable is more closer than global variable and we can see that's why the id1 value is used rather than id3 value so out of environment and global we now know that environment variable is given more preference let's also try adding a collection variable with same name so i'll add test common and i'll add say value of eight let's try hitting it now we can see it's still the environment variable that's given preference let's try removing the environment variable now and now let's hit send we now see that collection variable now takes precedence so the order is again the local variable environment variable collection variable if I remove the collection variable, it will start taking the global variable. So I'll click edit, remove the collection variable here, and click enter. Now it takes the value of global variable. So that's how the variable scoping rules apply in Postman. And there can be different combinations, but the most important analogy here is similar to all programming languages. The variable that is closest to the running code is given preference and it overrides all other values. Let's come to the last part of this tutorial that is about data variables. And data variables are a special form of variables which only come into effect during collection runner. That is when the request is executed using collection runner. Look at it as a data driven test. So suppose you have the same request and you need to run this request for say 10 users. So one way could be repeating this request 10 times as part of the same collection. Otherwise we can associate a data variable with this request and this data can be fed through some other ways like data files, probably CSV files or Excel files. So let's see how we can do that. In order to do that, I have a new collection called postman collection data variables. We'll use the same request and I'll name the data variable as test data where. To feed the value, I'll use a CSV file. 
with the column name being the same value as test data var. Let's see how the CSV file looks. The CSV file will have the first column as the name of the variable and other rows will contain the value of that variable which we want to execute. This file is saved as testdata.csv. Let's try running this collection here through the collection runner. And let's select the data file here. testdata.csv click run so what we are expecting is it should run for all the values of the request and we can see in the collection runner that our request ran for if we see the request url it ran for one it ran for two and finally it ran for five and how it ran was it takes one one value each from this row and replaces it in the place of test data where and that's why we get the request executed five times with this variable so data variables are special types of variables that come into effect only when they are run through collection runner so in all we covered different types of variables in this tutorial and as well as we also covered the different kind of scoping rules that apply when the variables have the same name but in general practice it is recommended to not have same names for the variables so as to avoid confusion that's it for this tutorial thank you